as Microsoft digs into pushing everybody into online AI powered accounts through Windows 11, they are also doing similar things to businesses and don't leave away right away. Just say, ah, oh, this is applies to business. No, it's a deeper problem and a deeper root. We're going to talk about what's going on. And if you happen to be at a small company, we'll talk about a couple of solutions you might give a try to. Thanks for checking out this video by Switch to Linux. If you like this type of content, subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so. Leave us a like and a comment down below. And today we are going to be talking about this article on uh, Windows Central. There is no escape. Microsoft flatlines Office Online Server and now it's Microsoft Office 365 Cloud or nothing. So what's going on here is there were a number of businesses. Think about your doctor's offices, your financial companies, a lot of huge companies that handle sensitive data. Well, in order to have an online cloud instance, they had the ability to use the Office Online Server, the OOS, and this allowed you to run a local instance of the Office Suite so that you could do your local collaboration utilizing the web server for your local industry without sharing everything to the cloud. Now this has deep implications because as doctor's offices and financial companies and a bunch of other organizations lose access to this old service, it means a lot more of our data as we interface with these companies are going to be exposed out into the world. So effectively what they're doing is they had this uh, Microsoft Office online server, and it was a self-hosted instance allowing you to host everything you need to run your Office suite on a local server instead. This is not uncommon for large companies to do, even some small businesses. In fact, one of the companies I do a lot of the websites for their whole organization, they are they basically they they do IT management. So they are an outside company that comes into mostly small businesses and manages their digital infrastructure and when they need a website, they contract me to work on all their websites. So they have the websites there, but they have internal email servers, they have internal office servers, all forms of internal infrastructure. And this is kind of the way companies want to go because there is a liability to putting a lot of the information that could be captured from a cloud server out on to the internet. And of course, as we know, as we put more and more stuff into Microsoft's servers, Microsoft does still have access to this information. They're like, it's all end to end. Yeah, end to end. It makes it encrypted from here to there. They have access to that information. And if that becomes doctor's offices and financial institutions and things like that, anybody else who is utilizing Microsoft Office is going to have these implementations in order to um, uh to collect all this data. And Microsoft is eyeing now co to collect that data as well. So this is, uh, of course, the, the OOS was targeted towards people who wanted Microsoft's suite of products without relying on the cloud itself. And so Microsoft describes the change as an effort to modernize its productivity tools and focus on cloud first offerings. In reality, it likely comes down to fewer companies using software that and Microsoft can uh, continuing to steer customers towards the cloud ecosystem. So effectively, they want everybody utilizing Office 365 cloud, which for businesses actually will get to the prices down here in a moment. So as reported on NeoWin, support for Office online server ends December 31st, 2026. That is a little over one year. We are talking 14 months. This server no longer has support. After that, we'll not receive updates, security patches, or technical support. And so what most organizations are going to have to do is simply migrate all that data onto Office 365 instead. This uh, author here says, if I put my speculation on it for a moment, another reason is probably AI, which is, of course, what a giant push to Windows 11 seems to be. Although it's just an educated guess, Microsoft says the move will give users better tools, automatic updates, and access to features like Microsoft 365 Copilot. Yes, it is all for the betterment of your business company is what Microsoft is trying to do. 
Some products remain unaffected, so the SharePoint servers remain and the Exchange servers remain. So the Exchange servers is where you can locally do your email through the Office, um, uh, uh, the uh, Outlook uh, emails, so you can still continue to run those, and the SharePoint servers as well also remain. It's just the Office suite itself is moving on. But again, I still have concerns that all of these documents that prior to uh, this was going internally only inside, now Microsoft has access to all this stuff, and we know that they utilize AI in some of these circumstances. And a quote from Microsoft's blog, they say, for organizations using SharePoint Subscription Edition or Exchange Server Subscription, Microsoft 365 Apps for Enterprise and Office LTSC 2024 remain supported for clients for viewing and editing documents on those servers. So there's the Office LTSC option. If your organization uses Office Online Server to host Excel workbooks and Power BLI, uh, excuse me, pa is it BL? BI. Uh, Power BI report server, that functionality will no longer be supported. Alternatives include viewing workbooks in the Excel desktop application or migrating to the Power BI service. So on-premises companies are going to be seriously impacted, and this means that they're going to have to start shifting their infrastructure. If they do not start shifting that infrastructure now, they're going to be caught. Uh, you know, they're going to be caught out in the in the tide with their pants down when the tide comes in, and uh, you're going to see a whole lot out there. You know, an old statement says you can tell who's skinny dipping when the tide comes in. Right there, you go. Uh, so you got to stay on this. Many organizations that relied on Office Online Server did so because it kept everything in house moving to the cloud could mean reworking internal systems which does not happen overnight and microsoft suggests alternatives like microsoft 365 apps for enterprise or office ltsc 2024 for those who still need local editing options but the reality is clear the company's long-term focus is entirely cloud driven so we do have that ltsc option if you choose to stay with microsoft but i'm going to encourage you to move off you if you need to make a change right now you may as well make a change to something with a better long-term sustainability and we'll get into that in a moment so as far as office 365 pricing for the basic business at six dollars per month per user the standard is 1250 per month per user and the business premium is 22 dollars per month per user so you're talking about a fairly significant cost output in the event um, you know you have a lot number of employees there not to mention giving all of that data up to microsoft so what is one to do well, I got to say that what I use internally on my infrastructure is the next cloud and I use specifically the next cloud all in one instance, which is a good option for Linux. This runs itself in a Docker container and uh, I run mine just on um, uh, there is a marketplace spot for this inside of your digital ocean panel. You can use my affiliate code tlm.li forward slash doh if you want to try this out have a look over at the marketplace and click the next cloud all in one instance and this will literally get you set up with online documents a talk application so like the microsoft teams collaboration type stuff uh decks calendars contacts all of that type of stuff you need file sharing of course everything that you need is all available inside of this next cloud all in one instance now i have a whole video about how to um about how to uh, set this up and, and things like that i'll go ahead and link that video at the end of this one so have a look at that and uh it will have in here everything and actually the management and the updating is super easy this runs on docker and then effectively once you get it all set up you just click in over here set up your domain and then once you need to do your updates you just kind of log into the admin panel and you go to the uh the container uh web page interface and then there's just a simple button there to click the button to reset everything it basically will shut everything down grab the new containers and then reboot the whole system on and of course with your um uh, digital oceans instance you can also do your regular backup suite so you make sure that you have multiple backups automatically managed by them which is only a couple bucks a month and so that is what i'm doing and i recommend for uh companies that need to have some form of local infrastructure now the other thing is of course is email now the email is not going away with microsoft they're maintaining those exchange servers but hey you might explore other things since you know the directions microsoft's moving anyway um i have 
personally do not host my own separate email servers because I'm using mostly cPanel and uh, that gives me all the email server information that I need. Super easy to manage in that instance. But there are all, uh, ultimately there are some other options out there. So I, I'm not familiar with any of these particular ones except for uh, Dovecot, which is uh, the email system used on ISP Config, which I have also used that with testing and experimenting as well. Um, but uh, everything in here are open source alternatives allowing you to self-host your email servers. So you might want to do a little bit of research to see if any of these might actually be valid choices for your email management as well. Of course, uh, assuming that you would like to jump off of that uh, Microsoft wagon because we know the direction that they are they tend to go so there is our uh comments down here let me know your thoughts about all this and uh, once again it's just we see microsoft pulling in every direction it's not just the consumers they are seeking to have maximum control over everybody's data no matter you're a consumer or a business they want to feed all of their ai systems and they are seeking to build a monopoly to have the most power in this world and this is why i just refuse to use microsoft products i do not want to feed in to the beast that is doing this. Now, there are other options outside of the Nextcloud instance. Of course, if you just need the local Office documents, um, there are some Nextcloud instances, although only Office has the good instances for that as well. I think Proton is working on some of these instances, not to mention Proton is a good company. If you do not want to host things and manage things yourself, Proton might be a good company you explore as well. So let me know your thoughts about all that in the comments down below. And again, I will uh, leave you that video on how to set up a Nextcloud all-in-one instance on your own server. Thanks for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.